Hello fellow coffee botherers, this is a first video in my new series on the Gadget Classic Pro 2023. I reviewed the Gadget Classic Pro 2019 in a past episode, but I've since started doing the new series approach on each machine, so I've been meaning to do one for the Classic, and given they've recently launched the latest version of the Classic, I thought I'd start this new series on the Classic 2023. I recently covered the changes I've made to the 2023 version versus the 2019 version. Click here to watch that. But in a nutshell, they've not made any huge changes. You can check the comments to see how many people agree. If you know about the 2019 version, all you really need to know about the 2023 version is that they've moved away from coatings and anodization. So the boiler now has an internal non-stick coating instead of being anodized. The porter filter is now solid stainless steel instead of being chrome plated brass. And the group is now all brass instead of being chrome plated. So all positive things as far as I can tell. There's nothing about the 2023 model that would put me off versus the 2019. In fact, I think it's slightly better, mainly because of the lack of chrome plating, particularly on the porter filter, as I usually end up looking a bit beat up over time. This is the overview video. As you'll have noticed if you've watched any of my other recent machine reviews, we tend to do the same kind of format with each machine. It starts off with a general overview and then includes a video on dialing in and workflow comparisons, cleaning and maintenance, and sometimes other videos depending on the machine in question. I'm not going to tell you exactly what videos are coming in this series. Instead, I'm going to ask you, other than dialing in and workflow, comparisons with similar price machines, cleaning and maintenance, and the obvious one for this machine, mods, are there any other videos you'd like to see? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to pretend to make coffee with it while I'm talking about it, but in case you can't tell, I'm actually talking and making coffee separately because doing two things at the same time is far too much for my intellect to cope with. If you already know the basics about the Gadget Classic, you might want to skip this video. Just skip to the end to find out what my completely pointless fact is and maybe work your way through this video series instead. So the Gadget Classic is really the original home barista espresso machine. Kind of. There were a few Gadget predecessors throughout the 80s, but it was really the Classic released in 1991 that became such a hit. Normal coffee drinkers have used this machine over the years using the perfect crema basket, the pressurized basket, and pre-ground coffee, or cheaper grinders, not really capable of standard basket espresso. And home baristas have used this machine over the years too, using standard baskets and espresso capable grinders. Many of them making adjustments and customizations, which initially included modding the one to fit around Chilio Silvia steam wand. Since the Classic Pro was released in 2019, this mod isn't required as it comes with the Pro Steam wand. The 2023 model, as with the 2019 model, still comes with the standard and pressurized baskets, so it still suits both types of users in that regard. It's quite a compact machine. We'll put the dimensions up on the screen. It has a two litre water tank that you can fill from the top or remove. It has an okay sized drip tray, and that's really all there is to say about features. It has a manual shop button, just start and stop, and a manual steam switch and the steam dial. It has a solenoid valve, which spits the excess water and pressure from the basket via this tube into the drip tray. Lots of people love that, and it's something you'll find on just about all higher end espresso machines, but a lot of the cheaper machines don't have this. The main benefit is you'll have drier used pucks that are more satisfying to knock out into the knock box. As with the 2019 version, it still comes with the OPV set to about 13.5 bars, and all this means is that there's a valve set to release the pressure when it gets to about 13.5 bars in the basket. And this isn't ideal. We really want that to be set to 9 bars. Some prefer 6 bars, in fact. This isn't a huge issue as the 9 bar or 6 bar pressure mod is very, very straightforward. I've done it, so it must be. Even more straightforward if you find someone to do it for you. If you're allergic to DIY, which is an allergy I pretend to suffer from. I'm actually amazing at it, but I pretend to be awful so my wife doesn't ask me to do anything. Shh, don't tell her, she's over there. Oi! <laughs> I'll talk more about mods in a future video in this series, so subscribe and allow notifications to see that when it's published. They've not made any major changes to the Classic really since 91, other than the 2015 version, which many people will argue was a lesser machine impersonating the Classic. Thankfully, that was replaced with the Pro. 
so it still suffers with temperature swings, which isn't a big deal once you get into a temperature surfing routine, and I'll cover that in the video on dialing in, but it just means learning to pull the shot at the right time when the boiler is gonna be at the optimum brew temperature. It's not ideal though, to make it ideal would require a PID. I'll talk more about fitting a PID in the modding video and I'll also be touching on the Gajuino mod, which is a mod which basically appears to take the humble Gaja Classic Pro and turn it into the decent D1 territory, which in case you're not aware of, is a very premium pressure profiling machine, starting at three to 4,000 for the base model. We'll definitely be going into more detail on the Gajuino mod in the future, by the way. So if that's of interest, make sure you click the notifications bell thing, as well as subscribing, obviously. This is a manual semi-auto machine. The manual bit meaning that there are no shot buttons, no auto features, etc. Pulling the shot and steaming milk is all manual. The semi-auto bit just means it has a pump, so it's not fully manual like a lever machine. The Classic is built to last and it's simple to repair and maintain. This is one of the big attractions of the Classic, especially to people who like to keep things a bit old school. They want to be able to take the lid off and do their own maintenance. It's one of the easiest machines on the market where repair and maintenance are concerned and it's one of the best in terms of being built to last too. If you look after them, they should last decades. I have one of the original Classics. It's 20 years old and it's been looked after and it's still going strong. It's not particularly user-friendly, it's a bit quirky and unruly, mainly with temperature swings, but you can work around that or you can mod it. It's maybe not the most modern looking machine, although they've released a range of colors now, some of which will look a bit more at home in modern kitchens and the iconic silver stainless steel classic. If you're someone who likes to customize and improve, then you'll love the classic. There's so much you can do with it. I know some people say that you shouldn't have to modify a machine out of the box, but that's the point really, you don't have to. Out of the box, it's a fairly capable machine that will wipe the floor, generally speaking, with most of the much cheaper pressurized basket machines on the market without modding. And okay, it costs three or four times the price of most of those, so it really should do, but it'll outlast most of these machines as well by a long time. But then with some modding, you can take this little relatively inexpensive machine just about wherever you want to. Just doing the easy OPV mod will make a difference. But when you look at all the other things you can do to it, it's very impressive. Yes, by the time you've spent a couple of hundred quid modding it, you could have spent a couple of hundred quid more on a machine. But I still think in most cases, you're probably going to be saving money by modding the Classic. You could argue that you should just buy the Profitec Go or the ECM Casa 5, but they're almost double the price. The benefit of going for the Classic is you don't have to invest in everything up front. If you do plan on modding, you can start off with the machine out of the box and then maybe do the OPV mod and then make a decision later on whether to fit a PID. The important thing to say is that the Classic is capable of really good espresso. The mods just make it slightly easier to achieve that great espresso and improve consistency from shot to shot. Unless we're talking about the Gajuino mod, which really does appear to be on a whole different level and also upgrades the milk steaming, but as I've said, I'll talk about that in future videos. The classic isn't for everyone. A lot of people are looking for more creature comforts, more user friendliness, more features out of the box without modding. If that's you, then see this playlist of Sage Espresso Machine Reviews, as this is who these machines are made for. If you can't make a decision on which machine to buy, and I get a lot of emails along these lines, I will say if you like the sound of the Classic when it comes to the ability to mod, how easy it is to maintain and how long it's likely to last, and if it's in your price bracket, then honestly, I don't think you can go far wrong with the Classic. And they hold the value really, really well better than most espresso machines actually. So if you decide a bit further down the line that you've made a mistake, it's not for you, you need a different machine, you're unlikely to lose much money on it. If you're struggling to make a decision versus a different machine, then make sure you click the notifications bell so you'll see the comparison videos when they're published. It's impossible to land on Uranus, because Uranus is made of gas, which has nothing to do with clicking the like button, but click the like button if you always giggle when you see that Uranus comes after Saturn. Saturn Uranus, lol. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you love coffee and enjoyed this video, we've got tons of content about how to make better coffee at home to take you from beginner to home barista. We've got reviews and how to's on the most popular machines. If you like the sound of that, click on my face to subscribe. Tatty bye.